What's up, YouTube? Reasonautics back once again, man. And uh, I just came by to do an update video on uh, again on another one of my video game collections, man. And also to to promote uh, an album that just came out yesterday, a music album that just came out yesterday, May fourth, uh, two thousand ten. Uh, I copped it, being a big fan of the group that dropped this album for years. I copped it yesterday, and it is off the chain. We'll get more, you know, we'll get to that later. But I just want to do this video, you know, again, update to my video game collection. As you know, if you watch my other videos, I got a brother-in-law who works in the garbage business, and he always comes across games for old retro consoles that people throw away for no reason. You know what I'm saying? So he brings them to me, man, and he brought me, like you saw my last update, he brought me a couple of 60, uh, 364 games uh, last week. Well, this week he showed up and he gave me a he gave me six games in total, three for the NES and three for the PlayStation One. Now the PlayStation One is a console that you know I wasn't a big fan of. I have it for collectors' uh, reasons, and uh, I didn't have I only had one game for it. Well, now thanks to him, I have four games because he brought me three. So I'm gonna give that system a little bit of love and show you the games that I got for it. But I'll start off with the NES. First off, he came in and uh, brought me this classic. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Now, I already have a copy of this, so this is a spare. You know what I'm saying? So I got another copy of it. It works. Then he got me a classic, man. A classic. And that is Double Dragon. The original Double Dragon. Classic. The original beat em up, man, as far as my opinion goes. It works perfectly. Uh, and then he got me this game. I'm not a big fan of this game. It's very uh, weird, in my opinion. But it is, if I'm not mistaken, one of three. I think it's a series of three or four games on the NES. Came toward the end of the NES life cycle. And was supposedly a very successful series, you know, especially in Japan. It's called Shingen the Ruler. Okay, it's kind of like if you've ever played the board game Risk, you know, which is like, you know, kind of like take over civilization, you know, countries against countries type of thing. Uh, it's, it's that in a video game. But I don't know how to play this at all. I tried to play it. It works, but I don't know how to play it at all. So, you know. But uh, just another addition to the collection, man. So once again, for the NES, we have an extra copy of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. We got the classic beat-em-up action brawler, Double Dragon. And then we got, apparently, a classic in itself, Shingen the Ruler. You know what I'm saying? So thanks to my brother-in-law for that. Then he also brought me some PlayStation 1 titles, man. Now, it's funny because... Again, like I said, people throw these away, and he just, you know, has tons of them laying around, so he brings me some every week. These all happen to be, or well, at least two out of the three happen to be greatest hits. So I'll just start from the very beginning. First, we have Real Fishing. Okay, it's a fishing uh, game. Then we got 007 Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah, Tomorrow Never Dies. And then we got Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Lone Wolf. All right. Now... Again, all these titles work. I tested them out. And, uh, I, you know, I'll give love to the PlayStation, even though I don't really like that system. Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies is, you know, pretty good. It's a third-person action-adventure shooter uh, starring James Bond 007. Graphics are not that great. I mean, they're good for the time. But uh, at the same time, they're not that great because at the time, there was a beast with double the power by the name of the Nintendo 64 putting out graphics like 007 Goldeneye that destroyed this but but as far as the controls and the gameplay and the action it's you know it's a typical 007 game pretty fun controls are pretty good except that it's kind of watery the analog sticks because this works with the DualShock analog controller uh it's kind of watery so it's hard to like stay walking straight because it's so like light no matter how you just touch it in a certain direction and it goes running in that direction but uh good good uh, 007 game here i'll give you a look at the disc i'm saying there it is right there 007 tomorrow never dies uh, I really enjoyed it, man. Uh, then we got, like I said, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Lone Wolf. I was never a fan of the Rainbow Six games. They were too, too realistic for me. And what I mean by that is, uh, I mean, in this game, I couldn't even beat the first level because just you get shot once or twice and you're dead. It's like in real life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like covert operations. You, you, you got a mission briefing. You have a map of the level. And then you choose an insertion point where your team is going to enter. And then there you go. Uh, it's a first-person shooter. Good graphics, man, for the day, let me tell you, man. Almost on par with the 64's uh, graphics, uh, as far as this game's concerned. But, uh, you know, not a big fan of it, but hey, man, it's, a, it's an extra game for my collection, man, and uh, I'm very thankful for it. So, again, uh, Rainbow Six t Lone Wolf. Then, like I said, we had Real Fishing. Now, this one is it's funny because I, I after booting it up and seeing the game itself, I realized that I downloaded a version of this on WiiWare. 
when it came out on the WiiWare. This, of course, is the original game. The WiiWare one's a little bit different, but I noticed it because this is a game. reason it's called Real Fishing is because whatever, you, whatever location you choose to fish at, you're actually looking at a living picture, like literally a realistic like video of the location. It's a real, not it's not a, it's not an animated or computer generated uh, river or stream. It's the actual video of a real river or stream or lake or whatever, and then you just see your little virtual rod at the bottom, and you cast off. And when you cast off, the camera switches to underwater as you're reeling in your bait, and you see the fish and all that. And uh, it's pretty fun, man. It's kind of hard to get used to how to reel in a fish. I always seem to snap my line or, or you know, they take my bait or whatever. But it's still fun. It's a good fishing game. And as you can see, it's a PlayStation's greatest hit. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it for the update, man. Uh, like I said, man, I got six games out of this, man. Uh, let's go real quick. Another recap. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Shing in the Ruler. And Double Dragon for the NES. Which adds some good quality to my NES collection. And then we got for the PS1, Real Fishing, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Lone Wolf, and 007 Tomorrow Never Dies. So, I, I, again, mad shout outs to Bruno, my brother in law. He probably won't ever see these videos. He doesn't really watch YouTube as far as I know. But uh, he's responsible for me getting all these games, man. Um, now, as I said, I wanted to also promote an album that I got yesterday, man. And that is the album by none other than the amazingly talented Bone Thugs and Harmony. I'm a big Bone fan from back in the day, man. From back in the day. Crazy Bone is my favorite member. I got all his solo stuff. But as a group, they're unstoppable, man. Crazy, lazy, busy, wishing flesh. And for you Bone Thug fans out there who know, Flesh and Bone is indeed out of jail. First time in 10 or 11 years. And the group is all together. And this is the reunion album. The name of the album is Uni5. U-N-I-5. The world's enemy. And I like it a lot, man. It's the typical bone flow, typical bone melodies, man. They got the singing, the rapping, the speed, and all that. But another reason I like it uh, is because it's got a lot of quote, unquote, and I say quote, unquote, because I'm a real Christian, man. I, I'm a real Christian. I follow the word of God to the, you know, I'm not perfect, but I follow the word of God. Christ is my number one desire. And so I know what real spirituality is, and I know what lip service spirituality is. And in this case, it's lip service. Um... But, uh, but it's still, you know, it's got a very, quote-unquote, spiritual message, very inspiring message. Most of the tracks are inspiring spiritual-type tracks, but there are a few hard ones on there, man. Straight gangster tracks. They remind you why Bone is Bone, you know what I'm saying? But uh, just an amazing album, man. I was kind of disappointed when I first heard about it because uh, I found out it was only 14 songs. And I'm like, man, Bone is usually dropping 18, 20 tracks, man. If it's only 14 songs, man, this is going to be kind of weak. But for 14 songs, man, they, they hit a home run. Got really good songs on there, such as uh, uh, Rebirth, uh, you got Meet Me in the Sky, you got um, uh, The Facts Don't Lie, Wannabe, oh man, a bunch of awesome tracks, bro. Uh, just a great album, man. DJ Unique, their original DJ from back in the day, composed the beats, man, so it's got that original authentic bone feel, but the beats are more modern and more modern day, so it's like... It's like Bone Thugs 2010, man. So it's off the chain, man. I I, I really want y'all to at least check it out. Bone fans, go out there and get it. People who are not necessarily quote-unquote Bone fans but like hip-hop and like good music, I'd say get it, man. Support these dudes, man, because if you know anything about Bone Thugs and their history, man, they are the most talented rappers to ever hit the game. Uh, and I say that with all due respect to every other rapper, including Biggie and Pac. And the reason I say they're the most talented ever is because they're so versatile. They got so many styles, bro. They got the hip-hop. They got the fast rap. They got the slow rap. They got the melodies, the harmonies, the singing, the singing and rapping together. They can do anything, man. They've done tracks with Big Pun, Mariah Carey, Tupac, Biggie, uh, Terror Squad, uh, everybody, Dog Pound, everybody, man. On Crazy Bone's solo album, Thug Mentality 1999 alone, in that album, you see collaborations with just about anybody in the game. They are the most versatile, most talented group of MCs that ever hit the scene, man. And I think this album is a testament to that. So check it out. Bone Thugs and Harmony, Unified, The World's Enemy. Thanks for checking out my video on my update to my collection, man. God bless y'all and stay gaming.